Hello everyone, Happy New Year! May 2016 see you filled with death positivity and bathing in the blood of your enemies. Not like real blood, like metaphorical blood. Not even so much metaphorical blood, more like your enemies are going to get multiple parking tickets. And their internet? So slow. Streaming video? Oh no, can't do it, not for your enemies, nobody better mess with you. You all seem to like the last favorites video, so we're going to do it again with some macabre favorites for the new year. There's a book, a podcast, an Instagram account, and a dead bird. So, the huge, the book. Since I talked about the preserved dead bodies on Mount Everest in my last favorites video, this will actually be my second recommendation having to do with frozen icy hellscape mountaineering, which may lead you to believe that it's an interest of mine. It's not, really. I can't conceive of climbing a mountain, especially an icy mountain, but perhaps therein lies the fascination. A primordial why? <sighs> I've been interested in the story of the Dyatlov Pass for a while because unexplained shit. Ding! It's 1959, Russia. Nine very experienced hikers, both men and women, head out to the Ural Mountains. The night before they're set to summit the peak, they came to summit, something happens. They slice their way out of the tent and run, barely clothed, into sub-zero temperatures. Their bodies are later found all over the mountain in various states of undress, one woman missing her tongue, the clothes they are wearing slightly radioactive. For years, people have thought aliens, a yeti, indigenous tribe murder, Russian government murder, secret weapons testing. It doesn't help that the only official determination of cause was a compelling, natural force. Horses. I finally read a recent non-fiction account called Dead Mountain. It's really quick, moves along, it disproves some older theories, and introduces a new theory as to what could have happened to the hikers, which I won't spoil. Dead bird. Trigger warning. 130-year-old dead animal. Ooh. Ooh. So a couple weeks ago, my friend Mike posted this bird on Facebook for sale, and I was not intending to buy a dead bird off Facebook, but when I saw it, I was like, give me the bird. Give me the bird, man. Sell me the bird. I need the bird. It's a wood pigeon from the late 19th century, and it reminds me of the 17th and 18th century still life paintings, where there's a dead rabbit and some wine and some fruit and a dead bird, just like this guy, and they've brought it back to the lodge after they hunted it. I don't actually agree with hunting game myself. If you went out and shot this pigeon for me today, I probably wouldn't think it was that great a gift, but maybe this is wildly hypocritical of me. I don't think that we should destroy older taxidermy pieces. They're historical and very beautiful, and I'm happy that the precious is mine. Podcast. I think this series came out in July, which means it's not the freshest recommendation, but I had never heard of it until another friend recommended it. And it's a podcast called You Must Remember This. And they did a 12 part series on Charles Manson and the Manson murders. But since it's a podcast on the history of Hollywood, it's still about the murders. Don't worry, murder lovers but it's also about Hollywood in the 60s and the relationship between hippies and studio and music executives and celebrity kids. And it's all a lot more complicated than I thought. There's Doris Day in there, Angelica Houston, John Waters, Candace Bergen, who I grew up watching on Murphy Brown. That's another recommendation, by the way. She was a bad bitch. That show is feminist as hell. That's not a very morbid recommendation, <laughs> but there you go. Instagram account. Now, you can follow me on Instagram, at the good death. I have an all right Instagram, I try, but you know who has a real good Instagram? Your friend and mine, Dr. Paul Kudinaris. From what I can tell, he has four main types of photos that he posts. 
type one, since he travels the world photographing mummies and charnel houses, he'll have photos from the Bolivian Skull Festival, or this Capuchin Crypt. Type two is he shows up at events in LA and I'm like, where are you even, man? Like, who, who are these people? That guy, who is that guy? Type three is when he takes his taxidermy to eat at the International House of Pancakes. And type four is when he takes glamour shots of his cat, Bob, as characters throughout history. Pretty nonstop wonder at old Instagram.com backslash Hexen cult. By the way, everything I mentioned, except my pigeon, you can't have him, he's mine, are linked below. So these are my recent favorites. Please share all of your morbid treasures going into 2016. One of my resolutions for this year is to put out at least two YouTube videos a month, which would be really weak and lame sauce if I made them for a living, but I am trying, people. For the love of death, I'm trying. Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. Brought to you with support from People's Memorial Association and the Co-op Funeral Home and donations from viewers like you. I love the precious. Why? <laughs>